okay? Right, so let's look at what happens actually in plant, even though it has, do not have the CCM. So how does it achieve the carbon-carbon cycle? <coughs> first thing first, the carbon cycle or the Kelvin cycle has three phases. Bear that in mind. These three phases are carboxylation, or the other name is carbon fixation, followed by reduction, meaning that you change the molecule of the cycle by allowing it to receive extra electron and then regenerate again the whole thing right so if you look at in the terms of the cycle it looks something like this okay very easy three phases however the detailed story for each of these that's that's what i'm gonna make people cry <coughs> yeah so let's read this. Carbox carboxylation, it's actually the action of the existing sugar molecule. You see in, in the chloroplast, there's already a five carbon sugar molecule, which is called ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate. 1,5 meaning that in the carbon change, carbon number one, carbon number five has phosphate group attached to it okay just to refresh your biochemistry right and this sugar molecule come together with co2 not in the form of gas but in the form of liquid okay liquid co2 fused together by the power vested by an enzyme catalytic enzyme called Rubisco, okay, right. So that is the carboxylation, and then when it enters, this will give rise to a molecule, three phosphoglycerate. I should warn you, because you're going to see a lot of this a lot later. Due to this. Um, biochemical reaction that can act upon one molecule, esterification, uh, carbamylation, um, isomer, isomer, isomerism. You're going to see so many things that is actually the same thing, uh, originally the same thing. So it starts with glycerol, glycerate, glyosylate i think and so on there's so many so these are all start as glycerol there's another one glycolic acid you should know glycolic acid if you go to watson all the time right that's that's the lot of that on on the cosmetic shelf what's that for glycolic acid Or you don't go to Watson. So these things, uh, due to this chemical reaction, we're going to see later, it will change the form from glycerol to glyceric, glycolate, and also the glycolic acid. Okay, but they are actually basically glycol thing, right? Right. So in here, it is phosphoglycerate. It is actually glycerate with a phosphate attached to it. Then these products enter the reduction with the help of ATP and NADPH. This is further changed into another new molecule called glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. You see, the 3-phosphate is not changing. It just it becomes a new thing due to the reduction action acted upon it, right? This is very critical here. You see, there's an opening here, meaning that the product at the end of reduction phase, some exits, the rest continue. Very important. Not everybody exits. It doesn't work like that because this is cycle, right? So 
the one that exits becomes the sugar precursor that I was talking about. Why do I say sugar precursor? You learn so far, it's all about glucose, right? Photosynthesis produces glucose, photosynthesis produces glucose. That, that is actually incorrect. Whether it gets turned into glucose or not, it's plant's decision. But what's for sure is at the cytosol level, cytoplasm level, two things get turned turn into first. It gets turned into starch and also sucrose. So this sugar precursor in the chloroplast, correct? Then it will exit chloroplast. Where is it now? In the cytosol. So in the cytosol, it will be changed into starch because that is the storage form of it. Yeah. However, not all of these can be turned into a storage form. Some needs to be transported into the baby leaves. So if the plants decide some of the sugar needs to be transported away, it is not going to be changed into starch, but changed into sucrose. So sucrose is the transport molecule. Okay, why sucrose? You see, did I mention anything about glucose here? Actually, plant decide to do the glucose if it needs the further ATP because glucose never leaves the cell. Remember, glucose that has been formed in the cell never leaves the cell itself. The only thing that leaves the cell is actually sucrose. Why is that? Glucose is very reactive. It's a reactive sugar, meaning that it, it will cause havoc with whatever it touches. That's why you cannot have so much sugar in your, in your blood. Okay? It's detrimental because it's very uh, reactive. So the sugar, if it turns into glucose, it will be quickly transported into mitochondria for cellular respiration. You see, very brief, actually, the, the lifespan of a glucose in the cell, plant cell. It, it, it gets manufactured, the glucose, then straight go to the mitochondria to be broken down so that more ATP is produced. Do you, do you see anywhere in here glucose gets stored? No. No. So that's why it is a struggle with us human because we always have some kind of glucose in our blood. We need that, but not too much. Okay? Right. So um, that's the essence of this. And what about the remaining of it? The remaining of it, uh, of this end product, uh, G3P, usually people call it G3P, will proceed to the beginning in order to produce this again, ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate or RUBB, so that the cycle does not stop. It will continue on, going on and on. Uh, don't think there's only one cycle in the chloroplast. In the chloroplast, in the stroma of chloroplast, there are millions of these going on at the same time. Okay? So they kind, they kind of complement each other at different speed. So if you look at, let's say that at 10 a.m., at any given time, some Kelvin cycle at this stage some at this stage, some at this stage, some at this stage, some at this stage, some at this stage. So all the stages are present at any time. Because they cannot stop to happen. If it stops to happen, it will cause backlog. It will stop the sugar production. All right? Talking about probably.